Okay, we got 15 minutes for a quarter. How's that? At first glance, he's a well-dressed Charlotte businessman who, like the rest of us, just doesn't want a parking ticket. But then you hear his confident talk. But this area was all blighted and decayed and high crime, and now it's the place to live for young people. And this notice the comfortable walk. These were all abandoned buildings when I was first mayor. And you realize. Hey, Pat McCrory, good seeing you guys. Yeah, I remember you up at the college. I did, a, did an escort with you. A chapter closed two years ago on Pat McCrory's political career. Even still, the seven-term Charlotte mayor turned 74th governor's notoriety precedes him. Would you mind if I get a picture of these? No, not at all. Got it. Perfect. Very appreciate you, sir. But sightings like this are rare. Since the election, McCrory uncharacteristically kept a low profile in public, and hardly anyone knew why until now. But the adjustment from uh, moving out of the governor's office on New Year's Day very quickly with no fanfare and then being dropped off at my house in Charlotte and just given a handshake going thank you and security leaving was very, very tough adjustment for not only me and my wife but also my extended family because of the many threats that we got during the four years. In his first extensive interview since losing re-election, McCrory reflected candidly well, on life and them. loss. I miss the decision making, the leadership, the teamwork, and making a viable difference. I think everyone wants to be relevant in their own way. And for McCrory, staying relevant means staying tuned in. No talking points. Hey, man, what's going on? David from Asheville. WBT presents. Did you know Roger Stone? The Pat McCrory Show with Bo Thompson. We got cameras in the studio, WFMY from Greensboro, North Carolina. The town I grew up in. He hosts and co-produces the Pat McCrory Show with Bo Thompson for two hours every weekday. Anything's fair game. A mix of humor. Did you have a poster of Ice Ice Baby in your room? I did not have a poster of Vanilla Ice, if that's what you're asking. And hot button politics. To all the police chiefs of North Carolina, will you work with the federal authorities in enforcing federal law. He sounds like the same Pat McCrory who once led our great state, an impassioned leader who hoped conviction would carry him through November 8th, 2016. Were you confident going into election night? Were you feeling good about things? We were, we knew it was neck and neck. We didn't yeah. know what, we didn't know what the results would be, but we thought we were going to win. In fact, I was with uh, then candidate Trump the night before in Raleigh, and I thought I would be winning and he'd be losing. In the end, Donald Trump took North Carolina, but McCrory lost to then Attorney General Roy Cooper by just 10,000 votes. A recount didn't change the outcome, and weeks later, he conceded. But if there was one reason you lost the election, what do you think that is? I don't think there was one reason. I lost by maybe 10,000 votes out of 4.6 million. There were 10,000 reasons. Among them, he suspects, was Lon Cecil, the libertarian candidate who took 100,000 votes. Another reason, his former employer, Duke Energy, which critics accused McCrory of favoring, even after the 2014 coal ash spill. I've heard this question still come up, even among some of your supporters. Why oppose that oversight commission? for Duke Energy. I didn't oppose an oversight commission. It was a constitutional issue of the legislate legislature having control over the executive branch, which is against the Constitution. The Supreme Court agreed with me by a very strong majority. And voters couldn't forget the I-77 tollway, a 26-mile project connecting Mooresville to Charlotte. A decade ago, it had bipartisan support before contractor problems and resident resistance. New I-77 pricing shows after the first six months, it'll cost a commuter nearly $10 one way during rush hour. Do you see a problem with that? Yeah, I hate it, but that's what the elected officials voted for. Regarding transportation, it's all going to come down to who pays for it. But perhaps the biggest cause of campaign controversy involved bathrooms. In February 2016, the Charlotte City Council expanded its non-discrimination ordinance. Any business providing a public service could not discriminate based on gender identity. Any violation, a criminal misdemeanor. Concerned it would allow men in women's restrooms, the Republican-led legislature passed House Bill 2, which McCrory signed into law. 
In part, it required everyone to use the bathroom corresponding to the sex on their birth certificate. The LGBTQ community cried foul. And North Carolina lost an estimated $3.7 billion in championships, a big business deal, and tourism. One lesson I've learned is that you can't go back. Yeah. But it, listen, the fact of the matter is the whole issue was a political um, North Carolina was being used as a political pawn by liberal activist groups that targeted North Carolina to be the epicenter on an issue in which there was no problem to begin with. By March 2017, lawmakers and new Governor Cooper repealed House Bill 2 in a compromise bill. What's ironic is the same laws in place today. Because he notes the repeal had a caveat. Cities could not pass their own non-discrimination ordinances until 2020. Essentially back to square one, he would say. We are back to square one. Obviously, McCrory prefers to remember other points of his political tenure. His on-the-ground response to Hurricane Matthew, eliminating North Carolina's federal debt, and much smaller projects like the Charlotte Light Rail. This was, used to be called the uh, McCrory Line when it was controversial. And now they call it the blue line. But McCrory says the past is good. the past. He has been full steam ahead, keeping busy. He went back to his teaching roots with a student-led class at UNC Chapel Hill. He enjoys quality time with his wife Anne, basketball games with his godson, outings with former governors, golfing, and the occasional Panthers game. And most of all, relaxing with his favorite dog at his favorite place, Lake James. So I've got I've got a good life. That I, I don't miss being governor, I miss the job of governor. Are you going to run for governor again? I don't know. In I, 2020? I, I, um, I'm keeping all my options open. Let's try a scale. On a scale of 1 to I 10. Don't know. 10 being most likely. How likely are you to run, maybe not for governor, I, but for I'm, public office again? I'm being totally truthful to you. I don't. I, I have not made that decision yet. I'm not saying that in a political sense. There are some days when I re, want to re enter political office, but there are some days when I'm not getting threats. And my wife is happy that right. I go, why get back into that game? How do you hope people remember your legacy as governor? Mm. You know, one thing I've learned in politics is if, if, if you want to be remembered, don't get into politics. I just know our team left this state a better place than when we arrived. And while the power of the people can take a governor out of office, it can't take a true Tar Heel from the old North state he calls home. Well, I plan to make North Carolina my home for life. In Charlotte, Megan Malaris, WFMY News 2.